My name's Jerry Hammond and I've been carp fishing now for getting close to 40 years, so quite a long time. Um, for the last 20 or so years of that time, I've predominantly been targeting certain carp, um, certain fish, certain fish that catch my eye, certain fish that really mean a lot to me and um, that's what I've been doing for the, probably the last 20 years. So across the country I've been targeting certain fish, um, you know, Yately Car Park Lake, Vinatro, Sutton at Home and, and the list goes on. That's a buzz I get out of my carp fishing is, is chasing these certain fish. And um, I'm currently, this year, going into my third year on, um, on a target fish in Reading. Um, and I'd really love you to join me on my journey. To give you an overview of where I'm at at the moment and probably like overview of the last three or four years, before I was on the water that I'm on now, I was on the Vinatro down in Chichester, another real tough, tough water. Uh, spent a couple of years over there chasing the half linear. Thankfully, that's, uh, that was all done, mission accomplished, so to speak. I've always got to think like, where am I going next? And I've always got three or four venues and particular fish that I want to go and fish for. And um, that brings me to the water I'm on now. I'm fishing over in Reading. It's a 50 acre sailing lake. Uh, with a very, very special carp in there called the Baby Black. Uh, I see pictures of this quite a few years ago and sort of always had it on the back burner, like that was a water that I wanted to go and approach. So that would be my, my target fish. There's some, some good backup fish in there. To be honest, I don't know the real stock, but all I do know is there's probably a dozen or so that you want to catch and the rest of them are made up of stock fish, little commons and... Uh, just a few little stockies that have been put in there over the years. But the backup fish are, are absolutely, like they're crackers. Um, there's a fish called the longfish, absolute belter, uh, pretty similar strain and looking to the baby black. And then you've got two or three others that are sort of 39 to 40 pound. It's been a tough old game over there. It's like I say, it's 50 acres, it's very low stocked. And it's a, it's a big lake to get round, some of it, you can't fish because of the sailing club. It's, it's, it's a tricky old water. I mean, you've, you've, you've got to be looking at the lake, you've got to be vigilant and you've got, to, you've got to work hard over there. You can't just turn up and chuck them out. I'm now coming into my, my third season as we approach, it's now February. Um, I've just got back from a little winter break abroad as I tend to do in the winter nowadays. And um, I'm not currently on, on the lake in Reading, I'm on my own lake uh, at Carthagena basically just to get the rods out and sort my kit out really. But we've got quite a nice warm spell now, so I am looking at getting back on the, uh, back on the target water next week. And uh, hopefully if the weather stays as it is now, I'm not expecting to catch nothing, but it'd be nice just to watch and look and see if anything shows and just to sort of get into the, into the routine again really. I started my time on Inglesfield in March uh, 2019 and um, basically trying to sort of um, follow up on previous captures of where the, the black had come from before and fishing in them, them areas. I did spend quite a bit of wasted time in, in a certain area of the lake where she has come from, but I think it was a lot quieter to be honest, like before I got on there. Um, and the, the little bays and places like that, these fish frequented, I'm sure they still do, but they were in there a lot more with a bit, a bit more confidence to feed and um, it just wasn't the case when I was on there. I, I didn't see the black in a certain bay and uh, I spent a bit of time in there because I knew it had form, but basically I was um, just chasing, chasing my tail around in there really and, and it come to no nothing. I never caught a fish out of this bay. So I ended up moving up towards the other end of the lake. It's like the very end of the lake. It's like a rectangular shape with a little bay cut out of it and a sailing club. So I'm at the top end of the lake that's where I had my first bite. I was fishing down to the reed line, down to the right. There was a little gravelly yellow spot down there. And um, I, I remember the take, I, was, I was, um, had my rods up quite high. There was a lot of weed in, in the water at the time. The wind was lapping in. And anyway, the rod hooped around and I, I had my first bite on there. And it was a, a fish they called a Junction 12 fish. I think, it, I think it was 29, 29 or 27. 27 rings a bell, so it's 27 pound. And uh, I was obviously late, it was my first fish out of there, and uh, I was off the mark, so to speak. And sadly, not long after that, I was asleep, and um, I just put, 
had some new alarms and I normally use my Neville's and these were different alarms and the tone just wasn't registering for some reason. Anyway, like, you know, you wake up in fright, I was dozing and I see the rod hooped over. I picked the rod up and this fish literally came out of the water and tail walked like, it was a good fish, it was a mirror, it was a, it was a fair size, could have been one of the better ones. And uh, God knows how, it cut me off on the lip core. It obviously dived behind, behind a bit of gravel out there and just cut me off. So, you know, some you win, some you lose. But I'm still gutted about it because I always to this day wonder what that fish was. But I was off the mark and two bites. And um, basically from there onwards, I was just sort of moved about the lake fishing um, various swims. There's a swim on there called The Point which is very popular because of previous history. It does do bites, it does do the black, and it gets fished a hell of a lot. And one thing I've learned now over the sort of three years that I've been on there is that for the amount of man hours, fishing hours that the point does, it doesn't do that many bites. But when they turn up, there's always a good chance of, of fewer the good ones. She does definitely come off of there. So with that in mind, I did try to get in that area quite a bit, I must admit it. When I couldn't get in the point, I'd, I'd, I'd sort of move in on the areas where I, I might have seen something or areas that I had a gut feeling about. There was a lovely swim that I did like, tucked in the woods, that did command a bit of water uh, into sort of like the middle of the lake, which is a little bit of um, a no-go zone. You can't really hit it from anywhere else on the whole fishery. But from there, you could, you could at the time wade down the side of the sailing club a bit and you could get a rod in, in this zone and through plumbing it, it was a lovely, lovely smooth smooth area out there that I'll talk about a bit later on. Um, so yeah, I, I tried to get in the point as much as I could and I think it was June. I've got a little bit of a, a diary that I wrote but without referring to notes, I'm sure it was late June. I ended up in the point swim. Fishing the swim previously, I found a real nice sort of ledge out there, a bar that drops down into a nice bit of silt and it does actually drop into to one of the deeper parts of the lake because it is generally five, six foot all over. But this little bit here sort of dropped off into sort of 10 foot, a lovely bit of silt. And it was an area that I did concentrate on earlier on in there when it was still sort of like early season. But as it warmed up, the weed came up and then um, I found myself in there for a, a, a session and um, I noticed that the spot that I liked to, to fish it was so weedy that you couldn't really get a good drop in there. Even on choddies, it was it was like a bit of a jungle down there and the spot was kind of overgrown, so to speak. So I ended up pulling back a bit further and then found a nice channel that ran along the front of this area. A nice little, little gravelly ch uh, channel. It was, it was a good little area, to be honest, a bit closer and um, a lot easier to bait and proceeded to give it a good bit of bait. I used to get up early every morning and watch and if you see one anywhere in the zone, I mean, there's, you've got an orange buoy that's a long way out and you, you can't fish to it. But if I see fish in that orange buoy area or coming across to the left, I was always confident that they would come and visit my area. And uh, on this particular morning, I unbelievably had a double take uh, from, this, from this area that I was fishing. And um, I think one was a fish called um, the gash fish at 30 plus. A stunner, a real, real nice fish, big scales on it. I think they called it the gash fish because it's got some sort of gash on one side. Real nice fish, don't think it comes out that often, so that was a big bonus for me. And then the other fish was one of, there's three fish in there called the triplets. Two of them are sort of scraped a 30, 29 pound, and one of them's like about 26. And the other fish was one of the triplets, an absolute beautiful carp. Similar strain to like a few of the bigger ones in there, like the long fish and the not so much, yeah, the leather, the long fish and maybe the black. They're all that sort of long shaped carp, like real, real crackers. So I'm, I'm buzzing now. I've had a 27 and I've lost one and I've got two in the net, which I was really obviously excited about. Obviously them, them, them fish were sent off on their way and I, I'll give them another larrap in a bait. And um, the next morning, unbelievably, I've had another, I've had a double take, sort of thing that you don't hear about on lakes like that. A very, very low stock 50 acre lake and um, a double take. These two fish are in the net and a mate of mine comes over to do the photos, uh, John Bartley. So he's come over, he's got a good knowledge on the fishery, he's fished there on and off for a few years. And um, he was chatting about another carp that, that I hadn't heard of before, a common called Pink Cheeks. And uh, mad, like we're chatting about it and the third rod rips off. And there she is, Pink Cheeks. Not a big fish, spawned out 
21, 22, I can't remember, I think it's 22 pound. I've got, I've had a triple take, like it's ridiculous. Sadly, weren't any of the sort of 18 cart that I desired, but nevertheless, it was five, bait, five bites that session and um, fish number six and one loss. So absolutely made up with that. I think after that, it was a bit tricky to get back in the swim, back in the area, as it is, you know, sometimes people hear you, you have a few bites and to be honest, like the point swim is a busy swim anyway, so it was hard to get in. So I ended up flitting about the lake, trying to learn new parts of the lake, new, new bits of the, the fishery. Ended up doing a few bits in that um, jungle swim that I call, uh, like the woods or jungle, what they call it. I call it the jungle. It was quite tricky in there. You had to have your rods out on like, um, there was all stumps in the way. So you basically got your rods the other side of the stumps in the water and you're set back there. The thing is with Inglesfield, more or less every fish that you get is a wader's job. You have to get in and wade out. Most of the swims you can't cast from the bank because of the trees, so you wade out. But it's great, it's different, different to where, what I've done before. Uh, there's even a few little bars you can wade out on and it's, it's all right. It's, it's, it's a good, it's, it's just totally different. I've always done everything from the bank, but now you're wading out and spotting from out in the water and just because of the tree cover light, you know. The jungle swim was a good swim that I really wanted to pay a bit of attention to. I did more so the, the, the following, like the next season. Anyway, uh, I ended up in the point again, later in the summer, sort of July, August. I managed another another 27 out of the point, 27 mirror, uh, putting me on sort of eight, seven, six, seven, eight fish and one lost. So not too shabby, but for the time that I did, you might question that. Anyway, um, I decided later on to um, give the give the point swim a good baiting. I could get in there fairly regular, getting down on a Monday morning. Nine times out of ten, I could get in there. Uh, but as time went on, it got more busier. But anyway, so I started prepping the swim up a bit. This particular year, we had a real, real lot of weed like that hit the surface over a big part of the lake. And then come sort of towards late, late summer, this weed beds were starting to uproot and then they're drifting around the lake. And then I'm on the prevailing wind on the point swim and what comes with it is big uh, rafts of weed coming in and it does make the fishing really, really hard. Jim's a bit of a, an inventor and he come up with a really good weed rake, really good. And it was like a, um, a floating rake with prongs coming out the side and uh, filled with foam. And we got it just right so you could cast it out and it would just dip under the surface and then riding it back it would hook all this floating weed. A brilliant bit of kit, it's quite tiring but you know to clear your line lay it's absolutely amazing tool. And um, I remember one evening on that point like just to get my rods out I spent three or four hours clearing this weed bed. I had piles and piles and piles of it. The rods were sitting by the side there waiting to go out, all rigged up, baited. And uh, I finally cleared it all. I think I was struggling for time because the light was like fading. And right as it was ready to, I was just ready to get the rods out. I turned around to grab my rods, mucking around with my rods for a little bit. Looked back at the water and another weed bed drifted in my line lay the size of a Mini Cooper. And it just weren't happening. I basically couldn't really get the rods out that night because it was nigh on dark after that. That's part of it, you know, that's, that's how it is when you fish these type of waters. And um, it, was, it was tough going, it was tough going. Uh, so anyway, I ended up, when the weed sort of dropped away a bit more, I ended up really prepping the swim up, put a lot of effort into it. And then, um, sadly, as it happens, I turned up one morning to fish it and there was another guy in there and never seen him before. And uh, I ended up fishing up the top end of the lake with Jim, looking back down to my old swim. And um, within a week or so, he'd caught the black. And that's how it goes, you know, fair play. And that kind of really put the uh, finishing touches to my, my year on there. I think it was getting into September, October. And to tally up the nights on my little diary piece, I'd done 60 nights over there. Uh, 60 nights for seven, eight bites. Looking, at, looking back at it like that, it's nothing to shout about, but I was just more keener than ever now to get on there the following year and um, crack on and try and get some of that 18, if not the black under my belt. and. Uh, I was on my way to India after that, so I could go away and lay on the, the beach in India and, and suss everything out and think about my plans for the, for the following season. 2020 
was a bit of a nightmare really, because as you all know, we had the COVID, the dreaded COVID. We was all in lockdown and it kind of took practically all the spring really. Um, I don't think I turned up um, until the 13th of May over at Inglesfield. I have missed a real good part of the build up to the, to the spring really. I felt like I'd missed everything, you know, but you've got to start somewhere. I ended up at the top end of the lake, um, just, just really, and it was actually quite cold the first trip there, I remember that. But what I noticed was all the onion weed was coming up and I knew it wasn't going to be too long before they spawned. I think I only done a night and I went and I came back again, done a couple more trips and they were, the more, they were, the more the weed was coming up with the sun, the more they were looking like they were going to spawn. And on the 24th of May, they actually started spawning. And um, I, I won't fish there at that time before they, or whilst they're spawning, obviously. And then after that, I tend to take a little break. I don't really want to be chasing them around because they're going to still be at it. Still going to be like one in a spawn and they ain't all spawned at once. And it's kind of that period of time. I don't really want to be fishing for them. So that's what I did then. I actually pulled off for a little while. I think I come and fished at home and um, just had a little break. The whole year practically was a bit of a bit of a washout what with COVID and missing the spring and all that. To be honest, I was missing the place and couldn't wait to get back. And I think I got back there sometime beginning of June. Uh, all that was going on in my mind was, is, um, as far as we all know, the baby black's a male and she would still be up there, 48 pound odd, and uh, still, still a fantastic fish to catch no matter what the weight is. So I headed back over there. I decided to start trying to concentrate in that wooded area, jungle or the stump, uh, not the stumps, the wooded area rather. And um, I did start putting a lot of effort in there. I got to really like the swim, to be honest. And um, one particular morning, um, I noticed that um, there was a lot of fish activity. I was looking across the lake, sitting out on the end, and John Bartley had come back because he'd caught a few of them and he, he wanted to catch the black. He'd not really put any time in over there for all the time I was over there. He'd, he'd pulled off onto other venues, but the one that he really wanted was the black. And um, just before this time, he'd caught the leather, which was another one he wanted, and one I dearly wanted as well. So he'd caught the leather, and all that was left for him to catch was the black. And um, this particular morning, I'm looking from out on the end of the sailing club, and I'm seeing a hell of a lot of activity, very long in the point swim, but also in line with this boy towards where he was fishing and I think I messaged him and said something like yeah mate there's a lot of stuff going on over your way um, I'll be awaiting the call and it weren't long after that that the old shout went up and he actually had the black so I went round there to do the photos with him and um, 48 plus absolute I think it was the first time I'd seen it on the bank and it just fired me up even more like you know an incredible incredible carp and uh, obviously John was made up job done and that's another guy off the lake, you know, he's, he's uh, mission complete. So John having the leather and, and the black's gone, there's no way I could pull off. I still hadn't caught like the long fish, the leather, other, other good ones that are in there. So you just got to you just got to carry on. And that is the thing when you're fishing for one target fish, it, it could um, come out to anyone at any time, you know, there's nothing to say you're going to catch it. Uh, you can put in as much effort as you like, but I do believe you'll get your rewards in the end. Most people that work hard at anything on the fishing side of things, they generally get their rewards like, you know, you know, what goes around comes around, you end up getting your chance. And um, so I, I plugged on and um, spent a fair bit of time in the woods. I did get on the point again and had a recapture of the gash fish. I think that was uh, my first fish that year and um, ended up after the gash fish off the point, back in the woods, as much as I could get in there, kept the bait going in on, on this smooth area that I really liked, and um, started getting amongst a few fish. I had a really old, crusty old, scaly mirror. I didn't even weigh it, I'm estimating it at just over 10 pound, maybe, 11, 12 pound. And I, I, I just thought it was a stock fish that must have gone in there. So I showed it to a friend, and he went, no, 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 that's, that's not the, uh, that's not stockfish, that's an original old one. So that was another little uh, bonus for me. Um, not that it mattered whether it was a stockfish or not, but to catch something that has been in there quite a long time, it was, to me, still worthy of a photograph, you know? It's still a bite out of a, an incredibly hard water. So I've had a couple of fish now. I've had the um, gash fish again. I've had this little uh, scaly one. And then later on, I managed to get another, another fish off of the area. Um, another one of the triplets, the second biggest one that I've not caught before. And I think that was £30 as well. 
So now I've had two of the triplets, the gas fish, and I've had a little scaly one, so I'm, I'm well made up, like, considering we'd missed quite a bit of the year. I carried on persevering with, with that area, and I think um, the next good fish I caught from there was, to be honest, I thought, I, I've had this, this fish, and I've waded along the bank to, to net it, because you can wade out, you're sort of wading up to your neck along the tree line, and then you come up to the shallow side of the sailing club that takes you out, and you've got a good vantage point there. Rather than trying to play it all the way back to the swim, I can walk down the sailing club bank and, and land, land the fish. Um, quite a lot of them did get weeded up, so you was just like heavy pumping in until you feel them kicks at the end, and you know you still got it on. Like anyway, this particular fish, to me at first, look on first invest, uh, inspecting it, I thought it was the black. It went in and like, you know, I've got that feeling, is it her, is it, I can't, I can't tell if it's her or not. Pulled all the weed out and it didn't quite look big enough. But from looking down on it, it looked, still looked a big fish. And as I'm walking all my way back with it in, in the net, I kept opening the net and looking in and, is it her? You know, you get that doubt in your mind. Three quarters of the way back, I said, no, it ain't her. It's got to be one of the other ones. Anyway, I shouted up a couple of mates, come round. Night Chart was on there, so he come round and give us a hand with the photos and um, it turned out to be the long fish. So I was absolutely made up. I've actually landed one of the A-team now after two seasons on there. <laughs> like, you know, it was starting to get me down a little bit. I'm thinking, am I ever actually gonna catch one of the A-team on here? Although I was getting the bites, I just weren't tripping up the better carp, you know? Just for video's sake. Here you go, you happy? Bloody happy. <laughs> it's an understatement, mate. Oh, on, one that I come here for as well, the old long fish, mate, well pleased. We got it on the bank, it was, it was a big big weight, it was 43 pounds, that's big for that fish, because it is a long, sort of lean fish, but it did have a bit of a stomach on it, you know, and it, it looked the heaviest I've seen it uh, in pictures and that. So yeah, absolutely buzzing, that's like one of the 18 crossed off the list. I'm trying to get the dates and everything in perspective here now. Uh, Pump, Tom Stokes was on the other bank, which is a bit later on, you know, later on in the year. And I have got the dates, but he, cut a long story short, Tom got his uh, prize in the end and he, he landed the black. I can't remember the weight, probably similar sort of weight to what John had it. Another guy that had been on there a few seasons and worked hard, caught a lot of the carp. And then Tom's, Tom's um, ended up getting his prize and that's another one off the lake. I know it sounds a little bit like that, but these guys that are off the lake are making it that much better for you in the in the long shot. I ended up having um, a good year that year. Without checking the diary, I can't remember every incident, but I stayed in the in the, um, the wood swim, the jungle, what I called it, for as much as I could, and, unless someone else jumped in there. And I ended up catching a real, unusual one it was a um, like a, a slate quite high shouldered probably a stock uh, maybe a junction 12 stock fish i don't know but it's like a slate gray in color and um my good mate jim epper come around and we weighed it up and photographed it at just over 40 pan so that's like two forties from that swim there and i'm although it ain't one of the known a team it was it was a big carp and obviously i was made up uh, to catch another good one from the from the water i think i stuck with it for a bit longer there but i ended up not been able to get back in there for a while and I started fishing another swim adjacent to that swim uh, called the Shitting. <laughs> it's a good swim, very good swim. There's a bar that you can walk out on and I was trying to, I, I can't reach the same zone but I was trying to get in that area like I worked hard in there keeping the bait going and ended up catching a few. I ended up having one of the nicest carp I've caught uh, from there called the Lever which, which John had caught, John Bartley had caught previously earlier on. And I, th I didn't know it was a lever. I had it in the net and Jim come down and he went, it's a lever boy. I was like, really? I just, you know, when you don't know, I don't know the fish. I've only seen them in photographs and in the net, it didn't look like the lever to me. Like, anyway, absolutely the colors of it were deep, reddy, browns, absolutely stunning fish. It's not a true lever, but it's a lovely, lovely levery carp, beautiful fish. Just over 40, 40 pounds, just over 40. So. I was having a good season. I've just had three forties now. I think I had three forties nine on the bounce with the long fish, the slate gray and the leather, something like that. Ended up getting a 20 common that session as well. I also caught maybe the next session, I can't remember, I caught the, the third triplet, 26. So I've had all three triplets now. I think after that, it went a bit quiet for me. 
um, flitted about for a while. And then um, my wedding anniversary in September, I, I went out to my, my family's place in Portugal and we stayed out there for 10 days. Jim was still hardcore, still cracking on. He'd caught the levee, caught the long fish and various other good ones. So he was pretty much due to black, I think, as much as I, I was like, you know. And um, it's really weird. I was out, I was out in um, Portugal and I had this weird dream one night that um, I was over this lake and fishing with a mate. And it was really strange. I was kind of a little bit off my rod slight and I had this panicking feeling where best get back to our rods, we've wandered a bit too far and with my mate Jay, I think. And then as we got back to my rods, Jim's turned up with a couple of other lads. Really weird, he's wearing like a white shirt and white trousers for some unknown, weird, unknown reason. And he's got this big grin on his face. And I've gone, you've had it, haven't you? You've had the black. And he went, yes, boy, it's all done. I was like, unbelievable. Really, really strange, crazy dream. Anyway, I've, I've woke up in the morning and um, it's funny enough, the night before he'd lost, or that morning he'd lost a fish and I had it on my phone, that he'd messaged me. And then the next thing I get is the phone call. Got there, mate, baby black in the net. I was like, unbelievable, how can you dream that? And then he catches it. So it was obviously 100% meant to be, you know, and uh, made up for him. Big, big weight, 52 plus. Absolutely looked incredible in the photos and fair play to Jim, you know. He fished really well over there and he's achieved his, his target and it was time for him to move on. So another one gone. <laughs> he didn't go far though, he's next door. With that, I think um, I, I uh, done, uh, you're talking sort of um, the end of September, October now, by the time I got back at it. And I think I fished up to November. We couldn't obviously go away because of the restrictions, but um, I just had a Christmas at home, I think, and then got back uh, for 2021. 2021 sees me back over there again on the chase i think i got down there on april the first i think it was easter weekend and um uh, i fished up in the the top end of the, of the lake with a nice wind pushing in but it got sunny it got quite sunny and warm that session i was there for three days and the fish definitely got pushed down and into that bay that i mentioned earlier on which they hadn't visited much and they were in that sort of vicinity and funny enough everyone was down there you couldn't get in down there. One thing I will say, it was getting busier and busier and busier. You could, I don't think I hardly fished the point really after that first year, nowhere near as much as I did the first season. You just, you just couldn't get in there. Uh, it was constantly got an angler in it and any other swim that had any form was being fished. It seemed like there was more and more people on the chase. News gets out and you know, there's a fish like that is not gonna go unnoticed and the, the banks got busier. Um, the wood swim that I really adored and loved was a swim that I thought I would have caught it from. That got closed down, something to do with the sailing club and there was a bit of like funny casting going on out of there and oblique angles or what have you. The swim got shut, nevertheless I was a bit gutted about that because that was one area that I really did like. So my first session, as I said, I was at the top end, I was in a swim called The Blocks and on my third night a real good fish showed. And I thought, well, they're not all up that end. And I tried to sort of, you know, when you think, oh, I ain't going to say nothing about that. That's, that's my knowledge. I'll be back in that swim next week. Anyway, the following week, unbelievably, it was actually snowing. I just couldn't believe it. It was freezing with a northerly, absolutely like chucking it down like with snow. Uh, I got a little video of all my car full of snow, covered in snow in April. I thought, blimey. Anyway, um, ended up all the major swims at the top end or at the end where the blocks is, were all taken. All the ones that I wanted to be in, and there was no one down the other end. So maybe something else had been seen while I'd been off over the weekend. So anyway, I moved down and funny enough, the point was free. And I stood in the point for a little while and there was a, in amongst all this snow, I've never seen it before, there was a fly hatch going on. <laughs> you know, like, and I see this carp's head just nut out on this fly hatch. And I was like, blimey, I've got to go and get my gear. I went and got my gear and I counted quite a lot of fish showing um, the snow sort of petered out but they were showing on this the seagulls were going bonkers all over the lake but predominantly up my end where the point is I felt really confident that you know as it goes I set up and fished for them with no joy I think I even tried zigs 
but no joy. I felt as though I really had a chance. They were definitely up and moving and, and up for it, like, you know, but just no joy for me. And um, the eel grass started to come up after that. We're into May. I'm taking you back to the 9th, 10th and 11th of May. It was a full moon and a really good low pressure. And I ended up in the boulder swim. Looked really, really promising, to be honest. We're seeing good signs of fish showing. The swim that I was in, the fish had come out the week before. So I, as far as I was aware, I was in the zone. But what had been happening over there, since they closed um, the wood swim, there's a big area out there that's inaccessible unless you're really belting them out. And there were a couple of lads on there that were fishing 35 rat pluses, like trying to get to them areas. But I'd noticed that the fish were showing every time I was down, looking across to that bank that run along in front of the sailing club, I was seeing fish show. Ginge Rich, one of the other anglers, was in the stump swim, fishing kind of that way. And it's funny because he was messaging me the night before. He said, are you seeing them out there? And, that, and he was seeing them by this blue boy. And it was really weird because he's going, they're just by the blue boy. And it just shows you like in perspective where they actually are. Because I see one show on the wind line. And he, and he see it and he said, yeah, it's just on the blue boy. It was way past the blue boy from my angle. I'm talking a long way past it. So I remember thinking that night, I'm just going to whack them long, like, you know, come off of my spots and just fish choddies or whatever, as long as I can get them out to that zone. Anyway, the next morning, Rich went and landed the, the black. Unbelievable, like, you know, it was, uh, it, they were in that area and they were creeping in and out all along that bank and obviously down to where Rich was. And um, fantastic. I went round and see, see her landed for the second time, 48-8. Uh, Another big weight for her, or him, and um, another amazing capture. And another one off the lake. <laughs> you know, this could go on forever. This is what I'm thinking now. Sooner or later, it's got to be my turn. I did pull off once they spawned after that and had quite a bit of time off and just got about with other business, fished other places. And um, after they'd spawned, I went back quite a way after. I had a session in a swim called The View but fish were still in this area and I think they did have another go at late spawning in this zone. So my theory was like this is way after they had, had their big spawn. Maybe the fish are hanging around in this zone eating the eggs or, or whatever. There's a lot of food in there and there were fish present but it was, it was top to bottom weed everywhere at that time. And I managed to find a little tiny little silty scrape about 10 wraps out and put some bait on it and fished it and I ended up having a tench off of it. I thought this, this spot's going to do a fish and then I see one like nut out and I thought stick with it, stick with it. It's just, no one ever fishes that close, not over there. That night I ended up having a take and waded out, you know, wondering what you got on the end, could have been any of them and it turned out I had a 27 mirror, one that I'd not seen before. I needed a photo so I just quickly done a couple of shots on my phone and slipped it back. I ended up having that fish having a tench and blah, 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 and then I couldn't get back in the swim. So then I ended up going next door and fishing one rod down to the same area and then one rod out. Anyway, cut a long story short, I ended up catching on the longer rod. I had a 30 common, which I was unaware was in there. I know there's a few commons in there, but not many. Um, a friend of mine, Ryan, had a 30 plus common and it weren't that fish, it was a different one. And I didn't think it was as big as that until I got it out and weighed it. And, there you go, nice 30 common. So another one to, to the list of fish that I'd caught. Later on, I was in there and had a real strange occurrence one night. I kind of stuck with that area for a while. Um, it's got good form and I just thought that that area might do me the black. I was asleep one night and I kept getting a, a few bleeps on one of the rods, turned out to be the left hand rod. And they were just bleeps. I didn't think anything of it really. And until I got up, and it was driving me mad and checked it and the actual rod had been pulled off the alarm with a bowstring tight line. So I was like, I've had a take, obviously I've had a take. And where it's pulled it off of the alarm, the, the bleeping, I believe, was the, the other rod, like the whole setup moving probably, where it was pulling the rod. Anyway, um, I lifted into it, it was weeded solid, got my waders on, waded out, couldn't budge it, put the rod over the back of my bivvy for a while, just watching the rod tip. Uh, pulled over a couple of times, picked the rod up, nothing, it's one of them, it's just in that weed and it weren't going far. I put the rod back on the, uh, the alarm, set the clutch, and I did have a, a short 
moment where a few clicks were being taken and I tried again, could feel it coming back, but nothing. Anyway, I ended up having to leave it till the morning and um, they come out with a rescue boat and we went out there and it was long gone, like I'd lost it. Um, absolutely devastated, you don't want to be losing them. But I had, I'd lost the fish and um, sadly could not get back in that area again after that. A few, I don't know how much longer, but a couple of weeks later, the black came out again from that swim. So <laughs> fair play, you know, like you say, you can't be in all the swims all the time. Um, but she got caught again and I think that was it for me. I kind of thought to myself, you know, she's been out twice now, pretty unlikely she'd be out again. I did intend on getting over there for the, for the colder months, but ended up going abroad um, instead. I uh, just feel like a bit unlucky really, but after all the time I've done on there, I think I'm on 19, 19 fish, a couple of repeats. You know, I can't remember every detail of every fish and date, so Everything I've said is not 100% accurate, but I've tried to roughly sort of bring you up to date with the three years over there. It's funny really, because it sounds a long time, three, three seasons, three years. We missed the second year, the worst, the best part, should I say, of, of the season with missing the spring because of COVID. Then they spawn and you pull off. But the second year, I had the best fish, like, you know, so I'm gunning to get out there now. It's February. The weather's good, so I'm hoping to get over there next week. You know, if everything, all the stars align for me this year, then hopefully I'll be slipping in there under the prize and um, I'll be one happy angler. But if you can follow me along, we'll keep you updated and keep you up to date what's going on. Fingers crossed, she's mine this time.